So why don't fights look like they do in the movies? I mean, if you go on YouTube and you Google, you know, real fist fights, real fights, they're messy, they're sloppy. It looks nothing like John Wick. Why is that? Mainly because movies are made for entertainment. They're not real. In real life, when people fight, there's real harm intended. It's there's, it's, there's anger, there's drama, there's no puns, there's no dramatic timing, there's no perfectly executed techniques. It's for entertainment. So today we're going to highlight some of the differences between real fights and staged fights or fake fighting. Now, one of the partial inspirations for this episode is a class that White Belt Zach and I took way back in 2001 in college. It was one of the coolest classes I ever took. It was called Stage Combat, and it was for theater, and it was literally how to do combat on stage for dramatic purposes, but be believable enough for the audience. The thing is, taking that class actually opened up my uh, perspectives to different contexts. I'm a movie lover. I've grown up you know, studying martial arts, and my other passion is filmmaking and movies, so I always look at the differences. Doing the stage class was even a different perspective altogether because there's different considerations for stage than there are on screen. Well, for one, in theater on stage, there are no retakes. Your timing and sound has to be done on the spot. There's no dub overs, there's no cutting camera angles. And also, yeah, a film, you can just try again and do another setup or pick another angle and add in sound effects. You can add makeup, whatever, you know, for spots. On stage, it's gotta be done right then and there with the resources you have at hand. When you're on stage, performing on stage versus on the movie, there's usually a lot more upscale in terms of more drama, more exaggerated movements. Speech is a little bit more exaggerated, mainly because it's a single camera shot, if you want to refer to it that way. The energy has to come from the talent and the performances versus editing, music, cutting. On stage, well, how do they make up for the lack of the filter? How do they make up for these fights to make them dramatic? Well, let's just talk about some of the things we learned in our class that were kind of fun. Grabs, when it comes to grabbing, it, one thing is on stage and when you're acting, safety is paramount. So you're not actually grabbing someone's hair or trying to hurt them. So one of the tricks we learned was when we did hair grabs or somebody grabs by the hair, we would grab their arm. And it wasn't so much that they were pulling us along as we were almost, almost we were guiding, kind of guiding them. We were going with it and they were following us. So there's no actual pulling intention, but it looked funny. It looked convincing because there was a struggle there. When it came to like slamming body parts, like slamming someone's head into something was a similar approach. The trick was you kind of, you make it dramatic. You're like, oh no, you grab me. And when you slam down, you use your hands to hit the surface and you kind of time it so it looks like it's your face or psychologically it registers as your face, but then you get that nice wham smacking sound. So for stage, that's kind of how some of that is done. Just it's sometimes the victim is helping guide the action. When you're choking someone, obviously you're not really choking the person that is sold with emotion. So obviously, you know, you're gonna put the hands around the neck, but it's very like contact. You sell it with the acting, you sell it with the emotion, you sell it with the facial expressions. That's what the audience is watching. They're not trying to see if your thumbs are applying on their larynx or anything like that. They're looking at you. Slaps and punches. These were kind of cool. For slaps, the technique was actually simple. It's how you stage it and you would stand a certain way. So the person being slapped usually had their, in, in our case, in our class, we had our back to the audience and the person slapping was more of an over the shoulder. And the little trick we learned was our hands are down and it's a little bit of a sleight of hand that when you would turn, like you would react to the slap, your hands would actually kind of do a, a little bit of a slapping sound. But the way you moved, it kind of looked like you were just reacting. And the more practice you got with that, the smoother you got, it actually led itself to some convincing slaps, even though we were never touching each other. Punches were very similar. Punches were cool. The person would throw the punch, the person reacting did the same thing. Hands came up and you'd reacted, but instead of slapping your hand, your hand would kind of hit your chest. So for like a, more of a deeper thud. This took a little bit more effort because it was very easy to get more of a slapping sound. So you wanted this deep penetrating thud, this guttural sound. So basically reacting to the punch, you would turn your head, same hand reaction, but you would just kind of glance off and kind of slap yourself in the process. It'd be more of a, if you do it right, it can be very convincing. And when you, when you hear the audience go, <gasps> It's, it's, you, you know you sold it. And sometimes you just have to get creative using props or whatever your scenario is. Uh, White Bill, Zach and I, basically this was, this was a class that we had. It was a full, full uh, um, semester course. And for our final exam, we all had to come up with our own fight scenes. And White Bill, Zach and I, we came up with our own like a little school setting. The, the whole performance is actually up on our Patreon for those who want to see it. I recommend checking it out. Make fun of us all you want. It's, it's old, it's from 2001. And sometimes you just have to get creative. In one of the scenes, I'm sitting in a chair and White Bill Zach was gonna kick me in the groin. Well, we're like, well, how could we make this a little bit more dramatic? The simple thing was I sat at the edge of the seat and Zach came up and he kicked the bottom of the chair right under me. It made this horrible zoom sound and the crowd went, oh! Ha 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 ha!
obviously it, was, it even it looked fake, but the sound and the reaction and the whole moment sold it because it was unexpected. So when you're on stage, you got to get creative with stuff like that. With the camera, there's all sorts of freedom, but on stage, it's all about creativity and ingenuity. When it comes to film and movies, okay, we know the actors aren't really fighting and hurting each other, but it has to be believable. We don't want to be reminded that it's fake. We it doesn't. It can't feel staged, it has to feel real. That's where we immerse ourselves into the film. And part of that, to making it believable is, well, determine the appropriate style of fighting with your characters and your story. You're not gonna have, do a street fight, you know, try to portray as a realistic street fight, but have your characters flying around on rooftops, you know, in like, like the old Kung Fu movies did. Also, if it's a comedy or a fantasy, you've got more leeway. It can be, it can be sillier. You can get away with a lot more. There, there's definitely an appropriate approach to each film and how you're gonna choreograph it. So the number one difference, I think, in terms of presentation is watching someone on stage versus a film is the camera. The camera is a tool and it can be used to your advantage to simulate a fight scene. So for example, if you've got two people who are fighting and you want to simulate a hit, if the camera is physically close into the actors, it has a better chance of seeing the depth between them. It can see better the spatial difference between them versus if you move that camera way back and you use a telephoto lens and you zoom in, what happens there is you're magnifying the picture. Well, you know, the foreground, background, they're all magnifying at the same time. It's the space illusion compresses. So it actually looks like someone who might be three, four, five feet apart look like they're right on top of each other because you're compressing the image. That's a very, very big advantage to film. And you see in a lot of movies where sometimes it looks like they connect, but they really didn't. But similarly to theater and on stage, the actors still have to uh, emote and portray the reactions to sell it. Additionally, since the camera is a tool, a lot of times the camera will react with the actor. So if somebody gets punched, tell me, pay attention to the next time you watch a fight scene. If a person that your main character gets punched, does the camera ever do like a little rattle or a shake? Or if they get knocked over, does it ever tilt? It's pulling you in. It's giving you the perspective psychologically of what they're feeling. The camera pulls you into the fight, whereas on stage, you're a spectator of the fight. And then when it comes to editing, editing dictates the pacing. So you have multiple angles of the same fight scene. You can cut it slow, you can cut it quick for an intense battle, or you can put your pauses in the middle. Again, stage play doesn't have that. The actors have to set their own timing. Props, weapons in films, okay? If somebody in a movie gets a bottle broken over their head, the actor's not getting hit with a real bottle. It's usually sugar glass or some sort of a breakaway prop. Same thing with chairs, they're made out of balsa wood or something very, very fragile so that it breaks, it looks great on camera. If you actually break a wooden chair over somebody's back or head, you're killing them or serious, seriously hurting them. In, in movies, it's exciting and it adds to the tension, but the props are designed that way to be breakaway. Now, when it comes to the weapons in films, uh, knives are often sometimes just the hilt and they'll animate the blade in later. Or it's a rubber knife that a lot of times you can just buy rubber weapons and you paint them a certain way and it makes them look real, but they're totally safe to work with. And in today's you know, movie environment, especially with films like John Wick, sometimes the action gets so intense, they just animate the whole thing outright or they'll animate the action scene outright. So you get away with a lot more, you have a lot more freedom with that. But when it comes to the actual real action, you have to give credit to the stuntmen. The professional stuntmen and what they do in the films sometimes will make or break the film. Uh, you can tell when a stunt looks real, they've done their job. A lot of times it's safely done, like with wire work and pads, but then if you look at the uh, old Kung Fu movies, Jackie Chan and his crew, sometimes they just throw themselves off building and hope they land okay. So a big shout out and a lot of respect to the stuntmen of films. You guys make the action look fantastic. That's on you. Now this part's gonna get a little bit subjective. My pet peeves when I watch fight scenes. What draws me out of a fight scene in the movie? And this might not necessarily align with yours, but I'll be curious to know what you guys feel. I don't like when I'm watching film and the choreography is obviously rehearsed and choreographed, where it looks like choreography, that pulls me out of it because then it feels more like they're playing. And you know, usually lower budget movies will do this. Doing a fight scene that looks realistic and highly intense takes skill, it takes a budget, it takes a lot of work. So when, when the movie kind of skimps on that and it looks too staged in a film, it draws me out of it. Also, when the camera's up their nose for a fight scene, that drives me nuts. You're showing us these really cool characters and they're gonna fight. Let, let's see, at least, let us see some of the fight. Uh, when, when the cameras are up close and they're shaking, and all you see is blurs, that doesn't tell me much. I can hear it, it sounds good, but you're taking me out of the drama a little bit. Pull back a little bit, or at least show some establishing, then cut into close, balance it out. Some of the culprits of this were um, one of my favorite movies, so Lethal Weapon. I love that movie, but at the very end scene, when, when Riggs is fighting the bad guy, it's you can't really see what the heck is going on. It's just too blur, 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 blur. Even Batman Begins did that a lot too. So that's just my personal preference. I want to see some of the fight. If I'm going to go see an action film, let me see some of the action. 
And sometimes this is a stylistic choice or they'll put it in for dramatic or comedic purposes. But when the fighting feels like it's a trade off, like I throw a punch, you throw a punch. I throw a punch, you throw a punch. It feels more like a fighting game rather than a real life fight. People don't do that. People don't throw a punch and miss. They stop, they go like, uh oh, his turn. So people will just keep on swinging. Remember, in real fights, people are enraged. So if you're portraying this on camera, try to get that rage in there. When it feels like they're just taking turns, that kind of takes out, uh, takes me out of it. Unless, of course, it's for comedic value or specifically done that way because of the context of the film. And this is a big pet peeve of mine when it comes to weapons in movies. Nothing will kill the mood for me for a fight scene than two people sword fighting and they're just tipping each other's swords. Tip, tip. It looks like kids playing sword fighting versus someone actually trying to hurt each other. Weapon scenes, okay, the, a weapon and presence in the film is supposed to up the drama, up the intensity. You gotta match that, make it exciting. A well choreographed, cut, edited, shot scene will be very effective, but it has to look real. Not just, you know, people don't really fight with weapons, they just kind of just aim for the tip of the weapon just to make that clanging sound. So that's just my personal thing. And, you, and a lot of you, I know you know what I'm talking about. You know the movies out there that you can see where the effort is and where it's not. And since we're on the topic of weapons, when a person gets hit with a deadly weapon in the film and they shake it off, it's kind of like, come on. And yes, there's a lot of over the top action movies, but if someone gets hit in the face with a wrench full blast, they're not gonna turn their head and go, ow, and keep fighting. Their jaw's over there and they're dead. So that's something I, that pulls me out of a film. If it's portraying a realistic fight and they're taking hits from some, like a piece of metal in the face and they just brush it off, that kind of kills it for me. And also on that same effect, withstanding so many hits, you know, everybody comes across as Iron Man sometimes. If the good guy takes a thousand hits to the body and the face, and he goes over and he kind of like, oh, he looks tired, but he gets the energy, he comes back and fights. It's like, sometimes it's not believable. I really respect the films when the character gets hurt, you see them react, they feel it, they're hurt. And a lot of films do that. Characters who get sudden skills. I, I get it that a lot of these are character pieces and we're trying to see development and growth. But when a character has training something and all of a sudden they're a master by the end of the film, depending on how it's presented, can be kind of silly. And as much as I love the show, Cobra Kai seems to be an example of this where these kids train for a few weeks and they're all black belts in the tournament competing and they're doing crescent kicks every time they're fighting somebody. To do a good crescent kick and knock somebody out with it is a skill that you don't develop in a week. It's a harder kick to perform. It takes a long time to get your power behind it. And it's not that practical to walk up to somebody and just cross and kick them. And for some reason, that show likes to do that all the time. But you see this a lot of times in movies where, where a character only has a little bit of experience, but at the end, they've mastered it all. And that's like, that, again, that kind of kills it for me. Now, to be even more subjective, here's just a couple of examples of fight scenes that I personally like. This is by no means a complete list. And honestly, I'm gonna leave a ton of stuff out because everyone out here is gonna have different opinions. So tell me your favorite fight scenes. But some of the ones that stick in my mind because the, the way they made me feel when I watched it. Uh, for example, um, the, the, the new James Bond movies, uh, Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace. Both those movies open up with a fight scene and a struggle that made me uncomfortable the very first time I watched it because it didn't feel staged. There's anger, it's raw, there's more scrambling, it's not clean, like they're slipping, they're kind of moving. It felt like a real fight. And that just kind of stuck out my mind because not too many movies at that time were doing that in the same way. So I love that. It totally pulled me in. Jackie Chan movies, I mean, come on. How, is there anyone better who can use his environment in the fight and make a fight scene, even though a lot of his movies are comedies? I love that he doesn't just try to stand there and take on an army. In most Jackie Chan fight scenes, when he's fighting a group of people, he's just trying to get out of there. He's trying to escape. And just the use of his environment is just some of the best that I've ever seen. So we gotta give a hand of applause to Jackie Chan and what he puts into his fight scenes. And it would be at the service if I didn't mention the Daredevil hallway scene. And I mentioned this one specifically because one, it appears to be one long take. It was filmed in a certain way to appear like you're there walking with the character, but it starts off intense and the differences are the bad guys get back up. They don't knock out easy. Like he'll knock a guy down, they get right back up and he's looks over and you can see the exhaustion, you can see the frustration. And as the fight goes on, the characters, you can feel them getting tired, more tired. They get sloppier. They have to stop to catch their breath. It kind of feels a little more natural. And as a viewer, since you're with, with them start to finish, almost you can kind of feel that sense of exhaustion. And I thought that was hands down a beautifully choreographed fight scene. Definitely a standout moment in the show. If you have not seen it, I do recommend watching it. It's got some great choreography in that series. And sometimes the actors really will hit each other. It's not always choreographed. 
Case in point, Rocky Balboa. Okay, Sylvester Stallone is kind of an anomaly in himself. He is one tough dude and he puts his all into his films. He's in fantastic shape at 70 now than, he, than most people are in their 20s. And when they were filming Rocky Balboa, he wanted to change it up a little bit from his other films. He wanted to feel a little bit more like a real boxing match, which is why they filmed it in the HBO video style versus the dramatic film style of the previous movies. And it wasn't choreographed as much as they actually hit each other. So they actually made contact. He wanted it to feel real. He wanted it to be a little bit more authentic. And I think it comes across. And there's even a shot in there too that he, he said in an interview that um, Antonio Carver actually hit him hard enough that it actually really rung his bell. So the reaction you're seeing Sylvester Stallone give on screen is his real life reaction. He said he had to fight to stay conscious while they were shooting that. And they filmed it in front of a live crowd, which even added to it. It was a real event in Vegas and as a pre-fight, they announced to the crowd they were gonna film a scene from Rocky and the actors came in and they did their shot right there. They did the sequence right there with a real crowd. So the energy is real, the fighting is realistic it realistically portrayed and it just, to me, it added so much to that moment. So those are just some examples of movies that stand out to me in terms of their fights. There's a lot more I could list. I'm sure a bunch of you are screaming right now, oh, you left this movie out or how about this one? Yeah, I am. I wanna hear from you. Tell me your favorite fight scenes. What are your best moments and what made them cool to you? What made them stand out to you? So basically those are some of the key differences between real life fighting and staged or fake fighting. If you're in the training in the martial arts, don't train like you're gonna fight in the movies. I've unfortunately known people who have thought this way. I, I have known people who thought that if they were fighting against two people, if they ducked, they'd punch each other, knock each other out. That's not how the real world works. If you're really training for real, just understand that movies are entertainment and they're crafted to be exciting, but they are no way realistic. And also for those of you who are more interested in how film stunts work and fighting stunts work, I do recommend the channel uh, Rustic. They, they're a stuntman, they do kind of break down some of the tips that they go and how they portray fights in a realistic manner. So go give them a quick, quick look, some cool stuff there. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, tell me your favorite fight scenes. Explain to me why the, why the scene came across to you, why it speaks to you, what drew you into it. I definitely want to hear what I might have left out on this list. And for those of you who want to check out our whole stage combat performance, we do have it on our Patreon. So please, please go support our channel, go check that out and the other exclusive content. Thank you so much.